as I said, protests all around the country. New York, uh, they were uh, uh, stopping traffic during a busy part of the time. Washington, D.C., Dallas, uh, on the major highways as well. And so uh, it was uh, it was an unbelievable day uh, of protest, an unbelievable night of protest across the country. Uh, this here is, of course, is video from two nights ago in Ferguson uh, when the announcement was made, when buildings were set ablaze. But the protests that took place last night, I think, are critically important because uh, what that was all about was spontaneous uh, action taken by people all across the country. Uh, Tim Lampley, he's with NewsOne.com. He's been on the ground there in Ferguson. He joins us right now. We also have on our panel here uh, in D.C. We have Lauren Victoria Burke, Politic365.com. Uh, we also have uh, Cleo Monago, plus we have uh, Kim Brown uh, as well. And I want to go to Tim. Tim, I want to start with you. Uh, last night, uh, we saw a police car set on fire just outside of the police department there. We saw folks also uh, protesting. Again, more than 40 arrests. Um, are, are these protests now, are they organized protests or are they simply spontaneous protests that sort of just happen? Uh, a lot of the protests that happen uh, at nighttime, I believe, are spontaneous protests. I think, um, you know, especially with social media, a lot of people are just sending out messages to people and saying, listen, meet me here. Uh, or the, uh, the police are starting to um, mobilize, uh, meet us down here. I, and I don't know, so there's, I guess there's some organization to that, but in general, not really, because you don't have a leader. You don't really have a, a, someone who's standing up and really uh, helping to uh, get this group of people together. Um, so I think a lot of it is spontaneous. And as a result of that, I mean, we, we see the organized protests in the daytime, and then all of a sudden, uh, all hell breaks loose at nighttime. Um, have they given a sense of what it is they actually want those who are protesting you know, at night now that's a really good question uh because when i'm out there i ask them a lot of times what do you want you know i think the bottom line is they want equality i think uh they want to be treated equally um mike brown they feel was not treated equally uh so the question becomes is this a matter of police and um the citizens who don't feel like they've been treated equally or is it a matter of being black and white, uh, you got a white uh, police officer who shoots a, a young black man, and then he doesn't, he's not indicted for that. Uh, you, you know, you have to wonder, but the, the question that I ask when I ask about that, the question, the, the answers I get usually are um, we just want to be treated like everyone else. We want the same justice that anyone else in this country receives. And, and that's the thing. They just want equality. They want the same opportunities for jobs, the same opportunities for, um, uh, you know, uh, to live the way that they want to live, to, to, to be who they who they want in their own neighborhoods and not be stopped and, and racially profiled. I want to go to our panel right now. Uh, I was, um, again, the, the protests that took place around the country, uh, uh, clearly folks are expressing their outrage, they're showing solidarity with what is taking place in Ferguson. Right. Uh, and I think that is a good thing. Uh, but one of the things I tweeted last night was I said, I hope uh, folks are in the data collection business. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I, I hope they are gathering names and information uh, because it's one thing to simply spontaneously protest. Right. But it's another to have a plan of action uh, and being able to get those names and say, this is how we want to move forward. Um, with the folks who actually came out. Your thoughts yeah, on that? Yeah, I'm actually seeing a lot of signs that will go into body cameras for police, obviously the issue of police brutality. I saw an interesting sign last night from Atlanta where somebody had photos of Chavis Carter and Sean Bell and Eric Garner and, and Abner Louima, a lot of people who have been victims of police brutality over the years. And I think it's also interesting, it would be interesting to hear uh, what our reporter has to say about this. We're seeing a lot of white folks out there. I know, you know, some of these, some of these cable stations don't want to show white protesters or don't want to make it into a thing that is a multicultural sort of event. But I got a friend that's in Ferguson right now that told me last night he couldn't believe how many white white people are out there protesting. I think that's kind of underreported in this. But you know what, though? <laughs> I, the reason I don't think that's, that's uh, one, I'm not surprised by that. I'm not either. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because on this issue of social justice, on this issue of fairness, uh, th this is a whole different generation. Mm -hmm. There are also the other pieces that, remember, 
This is the 50th anniversary of Freedom Summer. Right. A bunch of white kids right. who went down to Mississippi as a part of Freedom Summer, uh, working with SNCC and working with CORE. So, and some uh, white kids who lost their lives working with Freedom Summer as well. Right. The media seems to sort of make it a, I wouldn't say a white versus black issue, but I don't know that they personify how many oh, white folks are out because there. Because, fr frankly, look, m mainstream media has no clue <laughs> what in the hell is going on. I mean, you've got you've got Don Lemon saying some of the stupidest things <laughs> right. right. on CNN. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you've got some of these other folks out there. And, and the problem is they are approaching this uh, it, w w with a with a with a small mentality. What right, I mean by that is, right, right. I wrote a piece on the Daily Beast that's on the site right now, where I said that Michael Brown is dead, uh, but a whole generation is alive, and that's actually what you're seeing. I mean, you literally are seeing uh, this right. generation see, saying, "Wait a minute, let me connect the dots between Michael Brown and John Crawford and Eric Garner and Ezel Ezel Ford and Victor White," and they're saying, "We have a pattern here." and something must be done to stop this. Right. Yes. Well, I don't know if you heard the president's comments, but <laughs> they were not helpful. He said something about this is all occurring in response to some hard truths, but he never articulated what the hard truths are. He also said that he would not, he does not support destroying communities and that that's, those are criminal acts, but calling and implying that the protesters are criminals while saying that there's hard truths that are driving them without articulating the truth keeps the confusion going and and it's very condescending and not helpful. Yeah. There's a couple other things the president said that I found a little troubling where he kept saying that these communities believe that they are being uh, discriminated against. They believe that things are, are unequal yeah. and like, it's not necessarily... Like it might this, be a delusional. Exactly. It's not a belief. This is actually documented uh, facts that can be empirically proven. But I wanted to talk about uh, the protests from last night because I did attend the protests here in Washington, D.C. that originated at Mount Vernon Square. When I got there about 7 o'clock, it was probably a couple hundred people there. Right. But as the march moved along 5th Street and down towards uh, Union Station, literally, it, it, it seemed huge. like thousands. Yeah. And, and the hashtag on Twitter became shut down Chinatown for Mike Brown. And it was a very peaceful movement. It was a large movement, multicultural, right. as you said. There were people out there they're gathering email addresses, gotcha. uh, organizations sort of like the Revolutionary Communist Party, um, <laughs> sort of sort of like the, the fringy activist groups, no one of, of traditional ilk, I'll but, say. But, but, but that, and I, I want to come back to that when we come back. Uh, first of all, Tim, thank you very much for joining us uh, and giving us an update of what's happening on the ground there. Uh, so thank you very much, Tim Lampley with uh, NewsOne.com. Uh, when we come back, I want to get into that very issue because uh, that speaks to the what's next. How are people going to be moving forward? And so we'll deal with that right here on News One Now on TV One. Welcome back to News One Now from Coast to Coast. Protests, rallies, and marches uh, again taking place as folks express their anger. You also. Uh, had folks there in Ferguson continuing the protests, and we saw a much larger National Guard presence uh, last night. We didn't have the same type of uh, outbreak that we saw on Monday night take place last night. Joining us right now is retired Lieutenant General Russell Honore, who is quite familiar uh, with these sort of situations. Uh, and uh, General Honore, beyond uh, just what's happening in Ferguson, uh, we also have police in other cities who now are having to cope with folks literally shutting down freeways and shutting down ma major venues. Um, how would you advise not just law enforcement, but also the protesters uh, when it comes to this sort of civil disobedience? Yeah, uh, understand we got a civil right to assemble and be heard. And, uh, and when it comes to civil disobedience, uh, the protesters uh, need to understand that you do not have to become violent to demonstrate, as we saw last night with so many of them, just occupying the streets. Now, where we have a, a friction is sometimes when the police decide, uh, which is the law, you generally can't walk in the middle of the street. Then you got some cities you got to have a, a protest permit and right to assemble permit. All that being said, I think what it demonstrated last night is across the country that uh, protesters are learning the skills of protesting 
uh, and being civil disobedient. Civil disobedience said, I'm going to do something, government, you say I can't do to get your attention. And in that last night, it was a big walk in the street. Got a lot of people's attention across the country. Then at some point in time, law enforcement said, well, you, you got to get on the sidewalk or you can't block the intersection. That's civil disobedience. When you do civil disobedience, you need to be prepared to go to jail because you will be taken to jail. Normally, it's a short stay, uh, catch and release type program. If in the process of doing civil disobedience, uh, violence happened and someone, you throw a rock or you hurt somebody or you destroy somebody's property, that's breaking the law. And you not only go to go to jail, you could end up in prison, depending on the severity of the damage you created. So uh, I'm glad to see last night, even across the country, the police kind of got the word that people have a right to assemble. And when they go to walk in and they block the street, they're doing civil disobedience. That in itself uh, isn't uh, a cause for shooting citizens. Gotcha. The job of the police is to save, secure people and allow them to speak. And when you have an emotionally, nationally charged issue like this, the best thing they can do is let the people be heard. I want to go to my, I want to go, my, I want to go, I want to go to the panel right now because this was interesting. When the general talked about being prepared uh, to be an arrested, and, and I'm, I'm speaking again in terms of um, plans of action. Um, when you have organized protests, one, you anticipate they're going to be arrests. Right. You identify the lawyers who are going to go down to, uh, get you. to, to jail to get you. <laughs> uh, you also have bail money lined up. And, and we see this spontaneous action. And, and I get it, uh, but I think it's important that as this, as this goes on, so now we're going to be looking into the third day. We'll see what happens on Thanksgiving. We'll see what happens this weekend. This is also why I think it's important to be able to organize this. Right. Because, you know, one of, one of the criticisms that I had with Occupy was that it was sort of all over the place uh, and it wasn't moving towards something. So yes, folks were, they had presence. Yes, they were, uh, they, they, they were commenting on social media. Yes, they were, uh, they were putting up videos, uh, but you need to have a plan of action to sustain it. Otherwise, when you lose the spontaneity, that's it, Cleo. It's well, gone. It's a good idea that you are saying this and that it's on national TV and maybe some of these young people will hear what you're saying because you and I and others on this panel, I believe, come from a period where there was a precedent set on how to do this. These people here don't, there's not, we don't pass history along, unfortunately, on a large scale. And in fact, so they're uh, winging it. And in fact, what you just, what you said, a woman tweeted me and she said, you know, thanks for your advice, uh, but we're just learning as we go. And I said, sister, you don't have to write a manual. It's already been written. Ask those who've already done it who can help you out. But there's also a credibility issue, which you've heard me raise a lot of times. And I agree with what you're saying in terms of logic, but the reason why some of these young people don't come to the older people because they're like, look, the bodies have piled up. If you was right in the first place, there wouldn't be no bodies. Exactly. There wouldn't be no Amadou. There wouldn't be no Eric. There wouldn't be no Trayvon. There wouldn't be this. So, we, well, we're not sure we need to listen to you. And exactly. they should. Exactly. You saw yesterday excuse. Al Sharpton did the old let's have a summit <laughs> routine, which is the same thing that they always do. <laughs> so these young kids see this and they say, oh, wow, another summit. Isn't that something? Like the, the last summit saved the life of Michael Brown. Well, of course it didn't. The other thing is, you probably noticed yesterday Phil Agnew was arrested. I hope he's right. out by now. Phil Agnew with the Dream Defenders. And I think that, you know, one of the problems that these people are having is that the police, particularly in Ferguson, make up the rules willy-nilly and arrest people based on nothing. I mean, right. I watched on the live feed, they arrested some people for standing on a porch. I mean, all of a sudden that was illegal and you're under arrest. So one of the problems here is figuring out what the cops are going to do and what they're going to make up as law as we right, go. Right, but, but, but that, but Kim, go ahead, I'm going to honor well, for the uh, last comment. I, I think some of the bad police departments could learn from some of the police departments that are doing this better. Because like I said, I was protesting last night here in Washington, D.C. Let me tell you something, the cops accommodated all thousands gotcha. of us, right. okay? They were in front well, of the First of all, in D.C., they used the to protest. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? It's one every week. And the police don't bother you as a pro... You, I, gotcha. I am walking in the street. I am uh, disobeying civilly, but the police were expecting it. They were professional. They handled the crowd accordingly. There were no problems. General, i got about 30 seconds left. I, I, I still think it's critically important, and I want you to speak to, again, uh, moving towards organized protesting uh, because it's one thing to have all of this uh, support. It's one thing to, to sort of marshal uh, people together, 
Uh, but after that dissipates, what are you left with? Uh, well, to, to we've got to focus on what's going to be the political off ramp. Is politics going to solve this? We need a, a uh, new response 2014 uh, that is uh, uh, proliferated by the federal government that states sign into. For instance, if a youth get killed without a gun by a policeman, that automatically goes to the state attorney general. It's not handled at the local level. When you have something happen inside a county, uh, like a policeman kill a youth without a gun, that needs to go to the next level of government. Number two, we need to retrain police. We need to pay police a decent wage. Most of them are working two jobs. They're stressed. They don't get enough training. They have no martial arts training. And we need to get technology on police. Cameras in the cars and cameras on them. We can do better. We need a restart. What gotcha. we do is not working, and this need to be a political objective. Coming out of Washington, need to come quick so people can tie into this that something different is gotcha. going to happen. All right, Lieutenant General Russell Honore, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Coming up, we'll chat with some millennials about uh, this movement here. And I want to ask them specifically about yesterday's news conference and call by Reverend Al Sharpton for a emergency civil rights summit. Also, later in the show, we're going to hear from Lettucey about her new music and also being in the movie Selma. All of that coming up right here on News One Now on TV One. In many ways, these protests in Ferguson are being led by millennials who are raising up, some say stepping up when it comes to this issue of social justice. It is happening all across the country. And you, when you see these groups, you're seeing young African Americans, Hispanics, whites as well, using their power uh, to say enough is enough. They also focused on social media, activating people via Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, getting the word out to let folks know where certain protests are taking place. Right now, I want to go to a couple of our guests. We have freelance journalist and photographer Bradley Rayford. Uh, he is from uh, Ferguson, Skyping in from Ferguson, Missouri, and Jeanette LZ from NoIndictment.com. I want to thank both of you for being with us. Plus, our panel is still here. And I want to ask both of you something, and is it so? Uh, yesterday, well, actually, I'm going to ask you this here. So, I, I just got this tweet here from a woman, and she said, Was in Atlanta, and the groups don't want help from the established, established civil rights organizations. And, and I've seen this as well, and I, I see this friction going on, and well, we don't want to hear from elders, let the young folks drive this whole deal, but then you have fo folks who, well, I also believe that you have organizations that actually have infrastructure. Uh, let's talk about this. H how do we get folks to recognize that if we're both on talking about the same issues, we're, we're, we're working together, maybe not, you know, together in terms of side by side, but operating in your lane, other groups in their lane, but we're all going down the same path. Jeanette, I want to start with you first. Um, so on August 9th, we didn't need an organization to come out and tell us to go outside and protest. Right. Um, young people just went out into the streets. Young people, old people, children, mothers, grandmothers, everyone. And for 110 days, we've sustained our own movement by ourselves with the help of our community. Um, but for the most part, this is a youth-led movement. Um, I think established organizations like the NAACP or um, Al Sharpton's network, they've been here a few times, but the youth in the streets have not seen them. Therefore, they do not respect them. Um, some don't even know what they do. Like, I've had a 20-year-old guy ask the NAACP, are you a law firm? So I think that's telling in itself. <laughs> they don't know who they are, and the NAACP aren't showing the youth who they are. Elsie? Well, jo Jonathan, I'm sorry, Jonathan. Yes, go ahead. Hello, oh, I'm sorry, so, sorry, Bradley. Bradley, go right ahead. Bradley, Bradley. Like Johnson, Johnson, My man, Bradley. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. But I think um, watching, being out there watching the youth, it's, it's definitely a youth-led movement. Um, I, I don't. I think the youth out there right now don't think the older generation understands what they are fighting for right now, because uh, the problems we face today, even though are similar to what they faced back in the '60s or '70s, are a little different. Um, 
we have a little 21st century um, problems today. And so I, I think the youth uh, feel that if they cannot connect with the older generation, so that's why um, that there's a little lack of respect to the older generation um, from the civil rights leaders. Go ahead. Uh, Brad, Bradley, it's good to meet you. I have a question for you. You said that there's a difference between the older generation and that the newer generation has different problems. Could you tell us real quickly what the differences are and be kind of specific? Well, I think uh, with 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 the um, with social media and uh, uh, TV and everything um, that we didn't have that back then. So, well, I'm not talking about the platforms of communication. I'm talking about the issues. I thought you said something about the issues being different before than they are now. You're talking about the the, the delivery of information. Media. I'm talking about the issues that you are facing now. What is the difference between those issues now and then? Well, we definitely have similar issues, but it, it just this is the way the issues are, are 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 dealt with, like social media, and with the media. That that's definitely a big difference of what we have uh, what but, we had back then. Okay, but I, I was, but here's the deal, Bradley. And Jeanette, I'll, I'll go to you on that one because I think this is important. So I get your point about social media, but here's, I'll give an example. I got about five hundred thousand social media followers. I utilize mm -hmm. my social media uh, to send stories out to move people. Uh, whether it's uh, go, whether it's campaigns, raising money for Philip Agnew to get bailed out, raising money for the Dream Defenders. But then you have young folks who say uh, we don't want you involved, and and I, I'm sort of advising folks saying you don't want to push folks away who could actually be helpful to you by simply saying, well, you're 46 and you don't get it. And so I, what I'm trying to get to is how do we bridge that gap when you have people who are older, who, who, who have advice, who have counsel, who have resources, where we can actually be working on the same page as opposed to say, hey, I don't want any help. I, I, um, I think it's ahead. all about how you present it because there are organizations who have been established, who are here, who've come in and try to quote unquote take over, speak for the people. And again, the people have not seen or heard from them. Um, we've even had a national organization come in and say they're talking to the police on behalf of protesters and protesters haven't seen them. So what how can you represent who, who is that? people? No one has seen you. Well, what national organization said that? NAACP. Oh, well, and look, and, and, and I certainly agree with you, and we talked about the panel as well, because that's a fundamental problem uh, when folks want to come in and usurp. But here's the reality. The exact same thing happened during the Black Freedom Movement, where SNCC was doing work, and uh, NAACP or Urban League would try to come in in Bigfoot. That's one of the things that happens there. Um, but, Brad, but Bradley, uh, as well, in terms of being able to connect, do you believe there, there has to be bridge building there that's generational, uh, because we're both dealing with it because guess what you got moms and grandmothers and grandfathers and fathers who are losing kids Don't get me wrong. I, I definitely believe that we should be able to communicate with each other uh, generational uh, the gap should be bridged I think the uh, what you like to Jeanette like said the problem is we have now we have uh, uh, The youth they already are already on edge So when you have someone come in and they're trying to step up the youth they're trying to step up to the plate and have someone trying to step in and take over that's kind of a clash of a uh, clash right there. So I, I think in order for us to bridge the gap, we have to be able to work with each other, understand that we both have things to bring to the table and we both can uh, contribute to problem solving. And not one not one is not bigger and better than the other. Uh, and that's I, the problem now that we have now. Unfortunately, I'm out of time, but one of the things that we're gonna do, we're actually gonna uh, probably either next week or the week after, uh, literally have an entire hour focused specifically on this issue uh, because I think it is, a, it is critically important moving forward uh, in order for us to have this conversation uh, because, because at the end of the day, that's a whole lot of work in a whole lot of cities, and I don't think we need anybody sitting on the sidelines, whether whether you're young, middle age, or older, we need everybody in the game. And so I certainly appreciate, uh, thanks for all the work that you do uh, as well, and we'll be talking to you uh, very soon. Thanks a lot. All right. Talk to you soon. All right, folks. Uh, coming up next, we will hear from Lettucey. Uh, she has a special airing on TV One on Saturday, and also she's in the movie, the upcoming movie, Selma that uh, Oprah Winfrey uh, is executive producing and Ava DuVernay is the director. All that more coming up next on News One Now on TV One.
Birthday shout out time. Actress Garcelle Bavall turns 48 years old. I got to give her a shout out. Actress Olivia Cole, the first African American woman to win an Emmy for her performance in Roots, turns 72. And singer Tina Turner turns 75. Brooke Thomas also. Our call screener, Brooke, finally turns 21. Way to go, Brooke. Y'all didn't get a photo of Brooke? That's just jacked up. Okay, all right. <laughs> On this day in history, 1895, the National Negro Medical Association is founded. And so shout out to them. All right, folks, holidays are here. You got some folks who are shopping. You got others who are saying, no, forget it. Don't spend any money. I know some of y'all are going to spend some money. And also, we love gadgets. And you know what I do? I'm a techie as well. So uh, I got some stuff here that I want to uh, share with you. Uh, first off, let me do this here. First one I have up, Cleo has that one. All right, folks. So, Cleo, you like barbecuing? Um, I don't do beef or pork, but yes. What the hell do you buy? <laughs> portobello mushrooms? All right, then. So here's the deal. So, Cleo, if you want to heat up your portobello mushrooms. I didn't say that about no mushrooms. Yes, you do. Pork probably says you ain't saying beef or pork. I don't know what the hell you barbecuing. For one of the problems, one of the problems, you ain't right. I bet you probably got some mushrooms on your pit. All right, so... Uh, I, you know it takes forever to heat the coals up. So uh, this is thing called Barbecue Dragon right here oh, uh, by BarbecueDragon.com. What that does is it literally, it literally creates uh, the oxygen, if you will, uh, under the coals, and it heats up. Here's a time elapse right here. So normally you're sitting there waiting 30 minutes for your coals to heat up and everything. Right. What this does, it actually creates that to create that huge fire in 10 minutes. Oh. And I've actually used the product. Trust me, you're sitting there going, Praise the Lord, we're not waiting <laughs> all dog on day so we can get the meat on. So that's called the barbecue dragon. Uh, it goes for $59.95. Cleo, that's, that's mine. So let me think you're going to keep that right now. <laughs> so you're just holding it for the purpose here. All right. Uh, next thing is, you know, I, I love uh, music, and so headphones are critically important. Here's the Crossfade M100. Uh, these headphones right here, they re now, headphones are crazy these days, okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody's, you know, with the beats and everything beats. else. What I love about these here, and I use them on the radio show, is that Part of the problem with the other phones, you got to actually have batteries in them for the noise reduction and everything. Oh, really? You don't need it for that. Also, I've had it where I've stepped on or whatever. These actually collapse and it pops out. Instead Another one, they'll, the yeah, they'll just break, break on yeah, you. Exactly. Stepped on. And stepped on it. And yeah. here's the other piece. Normally, you can only do headphones on one side. This allows for you to put your plug oh, on one yeah. or both oh, sides. And so if something gets screwed up on one, fine, you can pop it on the other one as well. That's and good. so that's the... Uh, uh, the um, M100, and they actually sent me their smaller version too, by V Moda. This How is the. How much uh, are those, Roland? I mean, huh? Those, those are 310. You know the headphones are crazy these days. Uh, and but here's the other. But, yeah, but here's the other piece. Those yeah. headphones there. Put them on. Also come with the microphone, so you can actually use that to talk on your phone in the car as well. Mm. And this is their, this, these are their smaller headphones, oh, uh, and yeah, these here. Uh, but these also, this here also has the microphone on it, so you can use this for your music, but also as uh, talking in your car as well. And oh, so that's wow. what's great about. Are those the same price? Uh, no, these no. Are, these are a little cheaper than those. Those are larger yeah, than I these ones like here. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. those cover your whole ear, whereas these here sit right on top of your ear. And so okay. both are awesome sound. And I just love it, again, because, you know, the problem I had before with the Noah's, redu no, uh, Noah's Reduction one, battery died, okay, and I got regular sound versus the Noah's Reduction. Those shuts it all out, so pretty good there. All right, the next product is real cool that Kim has. Uh, this is the JBL Charge 2, okay? This is a, <laughs> I've tested all the portable speakers out there. Mm -hmm. All of them, okay? And this one here, I love it because it pops right into uh, the holder in a golf cart. With this particular speaker here, one, it has a USB on it. You can actually charge your any other product with USB. Mm -hmm. Also, if the three of you were sitting here, you can, if you can hit one of those buttons on there, and you can play music from all your phones on the same speaker. Very oh, nice. Wow. <laughs> it, so it's also Bluetooth as well. It has an auxiliary cable. You can use a cable as well. The sound on that is ridiculous. I've tested all the portable speakers. So in terms of size mm -hmm. and cost, I, that's the absolutely the best one. I this had the JBL Charge. This is the one. Oh, no, no, that has bass. This is, this is that the has one bass. Boom, boom in the golf cart. No, all, that, all that, that the, one, uh, yes, indeed. That one has bass. <laughs> that retail, that's $149.95 uh, right there. Uh, and again, that size, it just, I mean, it can just drop right into uh, your backpack or whatever. I travel with it. I mean, it is absolutely phenomenal. Now I want to go to one of my favorite devices. Uh, it is the uh, Prime X uh, camera. This is by Replay XD. This is, right here, a 1080 HD camera. 
that also I can change the setting to 24 frames per second so it gives you the whole cinema look. All right, so this, this is what it looks like. So you see, you can mount it anywhere. You can mount it on your bike, your surfboard. You can mount it uh, oh, on okay. your helmet. It records all kind of stuff. And you see a lot of people who are in action video, uh, they uh, don't come to me yet, Shelly. A lot of folks in action video, they use these cameras. Uh, you, if you saw the piece we did last week uh, on uh, Beyond the Lights on the red carpet, I actually shot with this on the red carpet. So let me show y'all what it looks like in the studio. So I've got this connected, and this is a live shot. This is full 1080i of Lauren, as well as Cleo uh, and Kim. You got Tim, I don't know what in the hell Tim is doing over there. He's doing some kind of dance. And you see the whole studio. Uh, this thing is, is awesome. You can actually also connect on your phone as well. You can see the video on your phone. Uh, this, this one is $299. This is the 1080 HD, 1480 HD. You can also shoot photos with this as well. All right, speaking of shooting photos, my last thing is called a selfie wink. Who loves selfies? Oh, this device here is a Bluetooth device. <laughs> and so what it does is, is a lot, so you connect uh, to your phone, and then what happens is you simply press this button uh, right here, uh, and then let me go ahead and do this here. So if I'm gonna take a selfie of us, I just simply press this button and what it does is it takes the photo. Right. Oh, it wow. takes the photo. So you don't have to see the impress the button wow. here. Wow. This selfie wink was run for $19.99. There we it go. Actually, uh, that's $19 all, that's all it actually, that's all it takes. $19.99 for the selfie about. wink. So you can Bluetooth your selfies and people be like, what happened right there? Look, cause some people arms too, right. they're short and they can't hit the button. That's a great right. You can do this here. All right, I'll see you in the photo. Man. <laughs> I'm Roland Martin. We come back. We're going to have some other stuff with these crazy people. <laughs>All right, folks, a little news. Former D.C. Mayor Marion Barry will lie in repose next week in the John A. Wilson building. So members of the public can pay their respects. The four-term mayor and three-term council member passed away on Sunday due to natural causes at the age of 78. Uh, Barry's wife, Cora Masters Barry, and his son, Christopher, and current D.C. Mayor Vincent Gray will announce plans for the official memorial events at 1 p.m. Eastern on today. All right, folks, uh, you know it's Thanksgiving, and of course, y'all getting ready to go home, and you did it with all family members. And I just believe you got to have some rules for Thanksgiving. <laughs> you, you, you got to have some rules for Thanksgiving. Uh, and so they had some other stuff. I ain't reading none of the rules they typed up because I gave those ones last year. Y'all got rules for y'all house as well for Thanksgiving? Not really. Uh, I'm just glad to see our family no, and everything. Forget that. You got to have some rules. Like so, for, so uh, one of my rules, which, which, is, which is critically important, uh, if you didn't cook anything and you didn't pay for anything, <laughs> shut the hell up. Don't be asking who fixed something. Just bring your behind over, sit down, and enjoy the food. Okay? I got a rule. What's your rule? All right, if you got a big freeway beard, you know, if you you one of these bearded brothers, and you cooking over the stove, you need to wear a net around that beard. Because if I see a beard hair in my chili or in my macaroni and cheese, we will yeah, have problems. I don't your care. Hair. Thank you. What kind of net you got over your head? Oh, you ain't cooking. I'm, I'm oh, you. Oh, but you. I'm right. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Here's another rule. I don't care. If you ain't cooking, <laughs> shut up. You ain't contributed nothing. I'm a cook. A little something. Right. I don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but my mama do. And she, whatever my mama tell me to do on Thanksgiving, that's what I got to do. That's, that's one of that's your rules. That's one of my rules. That's one of your rules. Okay. <laughs> one of the other rules is, is this is important here because uh, I almost slapped uh, my sister's now ex-husband. If you if if it's, you go to somebody's house, um, you can't order from pay per view. No. <laughs> you can't grab the remote. Y'all, I am not lying. Uh. This fool ordered a movie. <laughs> and I knew my, I was paying my parents cable bills. And I walked in, I was like, what, what is this? What's going on? Oh, I ordered a movie. You know what I went? $3.99. <laughs> put it on the table. <laughs> here to put it on the table right then. Here's another rule, and I had this one here. Um, if you ain't paid your child support, don't be asking what's for dinner. <laughs> Just come over, see your kid. Because, I'm sorry, if, you, if your child support not up to date, <laughs> How are we going to know that, though? Oh, we going to know. Oh, oh we going to know if you ain't cut a check. We going to know if you have not cut a check when it comes to... And here's the other piece. Speaking of child support people, you cannot come to my house for Thanksgiving and bring the Christmas gift. 
No, your That's punk behind no. got to come back for Christmas, too. Because, you know, some bros want to do a twofer. They want to see it for Thanksgiving and bring the gift. All right, I got one. So if you come in your Thanksgiving outfit and you got on your hard bottom night shoes, right, Ro? Just because the rest of your body smells good, don't assume that your feet smell good. So make sure that you have on clean socks, because I've been at the table sometimes. I'm like, that's somebody's feet. Wow. What, what in the in heck family. is going on at your crib? <laughs> What is going on in your crib? Don't worry um, about my crib, bro. I, we got I, 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 what, but, You got hair nuts and everything. Hair nets and everything. <laughs> now, I, now I need to ask. I need to. Poor. Henry said this here, and I mentioned the other deal uh, about buying the pay per view. This is the last one. If the if the TV is on the game, don't you touch that remote. Right. We ain't watching right. figure skating right. on that's, Thanksgiving. That's, that is it's, it's football. <laughs> understand? Yeah. Exactly. It's football. That's All cool, right, yeah. folks. Look, we gotta go. We got an All Star Entertainment special for y'all. I see you have a great Thanksgiving. Hi.